I just got a question on the Native Scripting Pro members Facebook group about using CSS gradients dynamically as backgrounds. And yeah, we know how to do gradients as backgrounds by now. This is a feature that's been around in NativeScript for a couple of versions now. However, how do you do this dynamically and how do you change the background gradient dynamically? That's what we're gonna do today. Hey, welcome back. My name is Alex Ziskind. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel where you'll see native script tips, tricks, and tutorials that we do here. And today what we're doing is we're looking at gradients, specifically how do you apply a background in CSS as a gradient. And we're not only gonna do this in CSS, but we're gonna do this programmatically in code, and then we're gonna also change the background dynamically. So without further ado, let's dive in. All right, so here I've got a brand new native script project. It's a native script core with TypeScript project. And this is the just hello world template. So I'm gonna open up the code here and we can take a look at the XML that generates this view right here. So I'm gonna clean this up just a tad bit. And we have this stack layout here, which is basically the container for the label that you see here, the button and the other label. So on the stack layout, I'm actually gonna apply a class just to show you what a gradient would look like in the background of this stack layout. And I'm gonna call this, oh, let's call it layout. Why not? So now we need this class of layout. I'm gonna go to app.css, which is our global CSS file, because that's already there. And I'm just gonna add a layout class here. Now I'm gonna create the background property and background is going to have a linear gradient. So linear gradient, let's define that. Now there's many different ways of defining gradients. I'm going to show you just one example of how to do this right now. So you can define from and to, this is basically CSS. So get familiar with linear gradients or other kinds of gradients if you're not familiar with them. But I'll show you one example where you can specify degrees. So you can specify 122 degrees and Visual Studio Code even helps you. If you write too many Gs, it's gonna turn to white. If it's just the right amount of Gs, um, it's gonna be yellow. Okay, so that's gonna be a comma, and then we need to provide some stops, some color stops. You can have as many as you want, but I'm gonna just use two values. So let's do hex here. F, 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 and let's go with one, one. Well, that doesn't look, okay, yellow, that's fine comma and then another one is gonna be oh you know what let's do RGB this time red green blue 255 20 and 10 that gives us that red color all right so when I save this and I'm gonna save all my files you'll see that we have a nice little gradient going on here in the background going from yellow to red very smooth and it's at 122 degrees if I change the degree number then you'll see that this gradient shifts. Okay, so that's pretty self-explanatory and this allows you to use hexadecimals, you can use RGB, RGBA, and you can even use HSL, which is hue, luminance, saturation. Let's give an example of that. So I'm gonna provide an HSL here. We need the hue, which is gonna be, well, let's give it 230. Then the luminance, let's give it 88 and then 34. So this gives us a nice blue color like that. Except we need percentages here, which is something that I forgot. So these two values need to be percentages. And now we have going from blue to red. So how do you actually create these backgrounds dynamically? And how do you make the values that you see in here uh, behave in such a way that you can change them on the fly? Well, to demonstrate this, I'm gonna add another component here called the slider. And uh, I'm gonna add a slider here. I'm gonna set its value to 10 to kick things off. And then we need a min value. So the slider goes from a certain value to another value, min to max. So we're gonna go from zero to 100 here. And we need some way to detect the changes in the slider. Right now, if I just save this, you'll see that the slider is there, but nothing is happening. So I'm gonna detect the changes. And in order to do that, you need to link up the loaded event from the slider so when it loads, you can hook up an event to it to listen for changes. So I'm gonna use the loaded event and I'm gonna call it unloaded. 
let's call it on slider loaded because I also want to have a loaded event on this stack layout where we want to apply the gradient. So I'm going to call this one on layout loaded. So we need two handlers in our code behind file and on layout loaded and on slider loaded. So let's do that. This is our code behind file, which is the same name as the XML file where we're working. So I'm going to clean this up just a tad bit, get rid of all these comments and let's export a function called what did I call it on layout loaded one of those that's going to take args of type event data all right I'm going to close this up to give us more space now event data is something you need to import from native script core just like this okay so there's one and let's do another one here called on slider loaded args dot object is the actual element that you're loading so you need to cast that because right now object is of type observable, but we know that up here it's actually a stack layout because that's what calls this on layout loaded function. But we can also use a view class. So view is more generic. It's a parent class of the stack layout. All right, so const view equals we're getting args that object. Now I also want to get a reference to that layout up here outside the scope of the function so I can use it later to manipulate its background when we change the slider values. So I'm gonna save it here. So I'm gonna say layout, so type view, and then when we actually load that, I'm gonna say layout equals view. Now, when we load the slider, we know that this view that we are, have down here in the on slider loaded function is actually a slider, not a layout. So I'm gonna cast it as a slider and make sure you import that as well up here. So that's a view as well. And this view, you know what? Let's be more specific. Let's call this one slider. And the slider has an event on it that we can attach and it's called value change. So we're gonna provide the handler for that here and this is also going to get some args of type event data. Now this one, let's take a look at that. I'm going to just console log args dot value here. Well, args dot value, if you need to, args dot value will give you the new value, but we can also use the slider value too. So anytime the slider value changes, the slider dot value property will have the new value on it. So I'm going to run this and let's bring up my console here and I'm going to drag this slider over and you can see the updates being written out to the console. So it goes from zero all the way to 100. Okay, so we got that working. Now, now that we know that slider that value will have the updated value, we can actually use that. And let's say we want to change one of the properties of the background, maybe the hue in the hue and saturation luminance values, I'm going to set hue to slider dot value. How do we change the actual background of that, that uh, stack layout that's in the background? That's the layout for the whole container. Well, we have a reference to it right here. So we can say layout dot background. Okay, that's one of the ways of changing the background and we can set it here. Another way of doing it is you can go to the style property and alter the background here as well. Either one would work. So layout.background, and I'm gonna set that equal to, well, let's head over to app.css and I'm gonna grab this string right here. Copy that right there, that rule, and I'm gonna embed this in a string, just like that. And now I can go ahead and change some of this stuff around. So for example, well, Let's start with degrees. Why don't we alter some degrees here? So I'm gonna change the degrees instead of hue for now, just to see if that works. So I'm gonna slide this over and you can see that the degrees actually change, degrees of the background, which looks really freaking cool. It kind of looks like you can animate this. And yes, you can animate this. See some of my other animation videos in order to be able to do that. And if you wanna see me animate this, let me know down in the comments below. 
and also tell me if you want to see the angular version, the view version, or the core version. By the way, for anybody that's watching this that's uh, using angular or view, this will work exactly the same way. You can attach the loaded event in view components or angular components and do the exact same manipulations. That's why I typically show the core version is because you can do the same thing with any other framework in native script. Okay, so we have that degree changing, but what if I wanted to also change the color? So here's HSL, I have 230 here. Why don't we change that and instead use the hue here as well? So I'm gonna set the hue there and you can do the same with RGB or with other values. Now, when I drag this over, you can see that the color shifts as well. So the whole hue changes as well. So that's really, really cool. Let me go ahead and leave the degrees as 120. And I'm actually just gonna paste another string here that changes the HSL on both stops. And it just looks pretty cool. I like the way this one looks. So it goes from red to green, and you can see like a little page fold down at the bottom. So if you're looking for that kind of effect, you can certainly accomplish that, and you can even have this animate back and forth. So that's how we can dynamically set a linear gradient background on the components in NativeScript. If you like this kind of video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions for me, I'm at Digitalix on Twitter. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.